With this example, we start to look at the theoretical application of plotting using Excel. Uh, in this example, we need to plot the polynomial function. This is the third degree polynomial function. We cannot plot the whole thing because the domain is all real number, it's endless. Uh, we're only going to plot from when x equals to negative 5 to when x equals to positive 5. Uh, after we have obtained the graph, we're going to use that graph and also use go seek, which I introduced before, to find all the zeros to the function. And zeros are simply the solutions to when the function equals to zero. So let's see first how we're going to plot this function. If you recall, you probably learned this in pre-calculus class, this method called the point plotting method. Let's do a quick review. Point plotting method. Say if you have an equation an equation involving two variables x and y and you want to graph this equation and by the way this works the same way uh, as plotting a function so the first thing you want to do is to rewrite this equation in a way that one variable can be easily solved from the other in this case i'm going to solve y from x and then the next thing is to make a table and start picking x values you can pick the x values however you want and then you calculate the y value based on this equation and then you have your so-called solution points they are x y values that satisfy this equation and also there are the x y coordinates on your x y coordinate system therefore you can start plotting these points on your x y rectangular coordinate system and then run a smooth curve through these points and that's the graph of this equation and as you can see the more solution points you plot the smoother the curve will be and the more accurate your plot will be so let's transform that into excel the first thing we do is to pick our x values um, we can Pick as many as we want because we have the luxury that Excel can calculate the solution points for us very fast. Um, so let me start with negative 5 and then I'm going to pick a step size. Let's do um, negative 4.9. That is a step size of 0 0.1. And then basically I'm just going to copy this pattern until x is 5. So I picked about 100 x values. So this is basically just a zero. Let me fix that manually. And then the next thing to do is to calculate the corresponding function value according to this function right here. And that equals to 2 times x raised to the third power minus 2 times x again raised to the second power minus 27 times x plus 36. And then we only need to drag this handle. And now we have our 100 pairs of solution points. And then we can proceed with our point plotting method by plotting all these points. Select all the data, insert. Now, in this case, I actually don't want to do a scattered point. The reason is because now I'm not dealing with experimental data. Remember I suggested always using scattered point when you were plotting experimental data. All my data here are actually calculated from a theoretical model already. Therefore, there's no reason to plot out the individual data point. For that reason, we're going to plot scattered with a smooth line. So I have just moved this graph up and fixed its axis and chart titles. So this is how you use Excel to graph a theoretical model, to graph a function or an equation. Um, and then uh, let's move on to the next part. The next part is to find the real zeros to this function. In other words, to find the solutions to this equation. At this point, you may ask, why do we even need this graph? Because we actually have learned how to use goal seek to uh, find solutions to equations. Now, if you recall, when we use goal seek, we always have to guess some x value, and then we need to calculate the corresponding function value, and we want to set that to zero. Now, what are what should be my initial guesses, and how many zeros do I have? 
without a graph, that information will be difficult to obtain. And that is exactly why we want to use a graph to help with finding my initial guesses. If you know something about the polynomial function, you can be actually pr predict the behavior. You know this end right here, the left end, will go all the way, fall to negative infinity, and this right end will rise to positive infinity, which means that the three real zeros that I see on this chart are the only three real zeros this function has. So now I know I need to highlight three spaces. And um, what should be my initial uh, guesses? Well, the first one is approximately negative 3.8, maybe. The next one is, um, I don't know, 1.4. Let's go with that. And then the next one is about, um, well, 3.4. So let's calculate the corresponding function values. So for that, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this formula over because that's exactly what it does. So as you can see, my initial guesses are not bad at all. These are very close to zero. Now all I need to do is to fine tune them. Therefore, I'm going to use what if analysis go seek. You can use the solver as well. But for this, we actually don't need the solver. So we want to set this first function value to be 0 by changing the corresponding x value. And then we need to manually do this for the other two. And then lastly, so as you can see, Excel has found our zeros for us. Let me just show three decimal places. And without a graph, it will be very difficult to have these initial guesses. And that is how we do this type of problem.